Can Victorinox Swiss Army knives be beaten? That is a question I wanted to answer in this video. So we've rounded up some of the best competition to see how they compare. Around since 1884, Swiss made great quality, affordable, functional, and with a huge amount of choice. There's a reason Victorinox have dominated the Swiss Army knife or multifunction pocket knife sector for so long but there are other options as we are about to see. And as usual, I'll include links to everything featured in the description down below. When it comes to competition for the smallest Victorinox in the range, the best-selling classic SD, we have this. This is the Next Tool Mini Pocket Knife. Now the Next Tool is made in China and is very slightly longer than the Vic, as is the blade. And both share a small screwdriver and an effective nail file. The scissors on both are the same size and they can both snip through paracord, which is good to see, particularly at this size. The next tool scissors you'll notice are not quite as pointed at the ends, but they do have a more substantial return spring. We have aluminium scales on the next tool versus salad or plastic ones on the Victorinox, and that's pretty much down to personal choice, but it does make the next tool slightly heavier at 28 grams versus 22 grams, but also slightly thinner too. In terms of price in the UK, the next tool costs 11 pounds and the Victorinox is listed at 26, which makes the next tool look like a real bargain. But the Vic is actually readily available in the UK at least for £15. So price is not really the decider here. That then for me leaves just one differentiator and that is the tweezers and the toothpick on the Victorinox, which are a nice extra to have. And so with that in mind and the fact that the Vic is Swiss made and comes in loads of colours, it's the Victorinox that wins here for me. Now, if anyone can beat Victorinox at their own game, then Leatherman, as the market leader in multi-tools, should be in with a shout. And the free T4 I have here is their best attempt so far. Now, the T4 has come in for criticism in the past because the tool set falls short, literally, when compared with a full-size multi-tool. But it does actually fare much better when compared with a multifunction pocket knife like a Victorinox. And there's a lot to like here. The quality is really evident the magnetic system employed by the free series works really well and all the tools lock into place and the lock and release mechanism is really nice and that's great if you're allowed to carry locking blades in public and not great if you aren't sorry UK. The blade steel used here is 440HC, which is a good all-round steel with similar properties to the steel Victorinox uses. It has a deep carry pocket clip, which works really well, and it's substantial enough to use as a belt clip. And the T4 comes in lots of different colours and includes these tweezers. When comparing tools to a Victorinox, some problems do start to surface. The blade on the Leatherman is more substantial than a 91mm Victorinox, but it is shorter, even though the overall tool length is pretty much the same. The scissors are the same size, and on first glance, the Leatherman ones look more substantial, but they're not quite as sharp as the Vic as you can see here with my scientific paracord snip test. The Victorinox, as you can see, has no problem here. They all doubles as a small screwdriver, tools which in my book should not really be allowed to mix. And the Phillips is nice to see, although it is a little bit two dimensional. Then we have the pry tool, come package opener, come flathead screwdriver, which I do actually really like. And then we have a file, which is really a bit too short to be useful. And if I compare the T4 to say a Victorinox Super Tinker, here we have a 3D Phillips screwdriver, a longer knife, better scissors, an extra blade. We have a screwdriver, pry tool, and a proper awl. Now there's no file here, but you do get a can opener, stroke screwdriver, a parcel hook, and a toothpick to compensate. The Vic is also a bit more compact and a lot lighter at 86 grams versus 122 grams for the Leatherman. And as for the price, if you live in the US, the Leatherman is $70 and the Victorinox is 43, which makes the Vic good value, but you still might justify the Leatherman on the grounds of it being more substantial, which it is, and also lock-in. 
However, in the UK, the Victorinox is listed at £40, but it can be found easily for £23, which is an absolute steal. The Leatherman, on the other hand, in the UK is £70 to £80, and that makes it very hard to justify. Now, I really wanted to like the T4. In fact, I do really like the T4. It handles really well and the quality shines through and I do like it a lot more than I thought I would. But for all the reasons mentioned, the Victorinox nudges it out for me. As most will know, Victorinox make their knives in Switzerland. But did you know there's another maker of multifunction pocket knives also based in Switzerland, who've been around since 1904 as a watch and clock maker. But in 2015, they switched their attention to making multifunction pocket knives with the help of a few ex-employees from Venga. Now, this company is called Swizzer, and this is their D4 non-locking pocket knife. Now, Swizzer make a wide range of knife options in a wide range of colors and with a wide range of tools. Although it's hard to say exactly what and how many because their website is an absolute nightmare to navigate. I purchased this particular one from a UK retailer online who only has a limited selection on offer. First impressions are very good. There's an instant feel of quality in the hand and the scales have a soft feel with a bit more grip than a Victorinox but they are also a bit bulkier than a Vic as they are more rounded. The knife itself is also curved compared with the straight edges we see on a Vic and when open the knife and handle also follow the same curve as you can see. The logo here serves as a button to release the blade on the versions which are locking, which is in fact most of them. This, however, is a non-locking version and so is legal for UK carry. Now, there's no keyring loop or pocket clip on this knife, which seemed like a rather unfortunate omission. However, I understand that it is in fact an option, which no doubt complicates online product selection even more. A nice detail though are these tweezers which are tucked away in here. So let's have a look at the tools in this example. As you can see the knife is rather substantial albeit still under three inches and that's because this is a 95 millimeter tool so it's a little bit bigger than a 91 millimeter Victorinox. The steel used in a Swizzer is on par with the Victorinox, which means it offers a good mix of properties and is easy to sharpen, but not particularly special. As you can see, the nail nick is actually a nail hole, which is a little bit easier to grab and looks nice too. And here we have an inline pointed bladed awl with a sewing eye, albeit quite a small one. And I think this is a nice addition and a bit like what we see in some Victorinox Alox knives, albeit a little bit smaller. I do like this tool though. Then we have the two staple tools we see in most Victorinoxes, the can opener and bottle opener, both with screwdriver ends. And like the Vic, the Swizzer flathead screwdriver has a 90 degree half stop. Notice how the tools when closed follow the shape of the main blade, which is a nice design detail. And then finally, we have a T-handle Phillips like we see in the Victorinox, but a bit more substantial and with a flat side to sit a little bit closer to the body. Now, Swizzer have, let's just say, an interesting selection of tools beyond the more expected saw and corkscrew. For example, we have a tick remover and a hoof tool for equestrians and a blade designed to eviscerate, which actually sounds more like a spell from Harry Potter. So things are looking pretty good with the Swizzer, that is until we get to the scissors. Now, Swizzer do offer scissors on four models in the range, and I struggle to get a hold of one, unfortunately, for this comparison. But I would describe these as shears and not scissors. They are large and unwieldy, and from what I've seen, really awkward to use. Sometimes the wheel just doesn't need to be reinvented. As for the price, this model cost me £29, which is good value, I would say. And the same list price as the Victorinox Tinker, which has a similar tool set. The Swizzer, though, is a bit bigger, and that might swing it for some, along with the rubbery scales and the curvy design. 
In my case, the scissors on the Victorinox are one of my most used tools. And so that would unfortunately rule out the Swizzer for me. But if that doesn't bother you, then this is certainly an option worthy of consideration. This is the Roxon KS2, comes from China and it does things differently. The tool is slightly shorter than a 91 millimeter Victorinox, but it is quite a bit wider as you can see. And as for the thickness, it sits somewhere between a three and four layer Victorinox. The scales are G10 with a little bit of texture for grip. The knife, which is shorter and wider than the Victorinox, opens with a thumb stud and is locking with a liner lock. The steel used here is 5CR15MLV, which has to be said is a little bit poor when it comes to holding an edge. Next to the knife, we have these huge scissors. Just look at them alongside the Victorinox. They are spring loaded and very sharp and work really well. As you can see, they have no problem at all with this paracord. It's what really sets this tool apart. And if scissors are what you're looking for, you'd be hard pushed to find much that can improve on these. Inside the handle of the scissors, we have some tweezers. Nice to have, although not as good as the ones we see in the other tools. On the other side of the tool, we have a saw with liner lock, which is a little bit shorter than the equivalent 91 millimeter Victorinox. Then we have three more tools here accessed via this button and we have a 3D Phillips with a short crosscut file and actually it's got a rule on the back and then we've got this bladed awl which is very sharp with a sewing eye and then we've got a combined can opener and bottle opener and also a small flathead screwdriver. There's no large flathead screwdriver in this tool, which I find somewhat annoying and Roxxon always seem to miss this off. These three tools all lock into place and are released with the same button used to access the tools in the first place, which is a really nice feature. Other things of note include a tungsten glass breaker in the bottom of the tool and also a deep carry pocket clip, which appears rather flimsy compared with the competition. Now I paid 30 pounds for this on Amazon and that should equate to around $30. So the price is quite reasonable. The Vic with the closest matching tool set is the Fieldmaster, which is readily available at £33 in the UK. And you don't get a file with the Fieldmaster, which is a little bit too short to be useful here anyway. But you do get an extra blade, parcel hook and a toothpick. And it has to be said, the quality fit and finish of the Victorinox is vastly superior to the Roxxon. And the Vic is also lighter in weight at 100 grams versus 127 for the Roxxon. Again, the Victorinox gets my vote here, unless of course you want those huge capable scissors and or locking tools, in which case the Roxxon might just swing it. Next up, we have the Fox Vulpids from the well-known Italian knife brand. And what we have here is quite a bit smaller than the 91 millimeter Victorinox coming in at around 73 millimeters. And in fact, sits halfway between the 91 millimeter Victorinox and the small 58 millimeter models. Now there are three different models to choose from and three scale material options. And looking at the scales, we have aluminium in three colors, orange, blue, and green and then we have carbon fiber and also titanium and we have a two layer three layer and four layer tool option the two layer knife which i have here with the carbon fiber scales has a main blade which is obviously a bit smaller than a 91 millimeter victorinox but not massively so considering the overall size difference the blade steel used here is m390 and the knife is a slip joint with a half stop and it has a very precise feel to it, which I like. And as you can see, the nail nick is a nail cutout, which helps a little bit with access and also looks good. As far as the other tools go, we have here a can opener with what looks like a very precision screwdriver on the end here. And I found this also makes a great package opener as it's very sharp and you can nicely control how deep it cuts. 
On the opposite side, we have the usual bottle opener with a ever so slightly larger screwdriver. And then we have a key ring loop. When we move up from the two layer knife to a three layer knife, then you add either a saw or scissors. And the version I've got here has the saw with the aluminium scales. Now the saw here is a little bit smaller compared to the 91 millimeter Victorinox, although I don't think it's a tool I would look for in a small pocket knife. My preference would be for the scissors. The blade steel used here is N690 and that compares with most of the tools on offer here. When we move from a three layer knife to a four layer knife, you then get the scissors and the saw. And this titanium version also have M390 blade steel. The scissors are small compared with the 91 millimeter Victorinox and they're not as sharp. In fact, even the smallest Victorinox scissors cut better than these as we can see from the paracord test. The price varies depending on the scales and tools, but as an idea, this one costs £49 in the UK and this one here costs 48 and the titanium one here with the four layers at the top of the range costs £75. So obviously this is not a budget option. You can get a bigger Victorinox with a lot more features for a lot less money. But if a 91mm Victorinox is too big for your everyday carry and a 58mm one is too small, then this in fact could be the Goldilocks knife you are looking for. The quality is good and the tools are practical, although I'd like to see one of those near identical screwdrivers turned into something like a two-dimensional Phillips. And it did get me thinking about trying the three-layer scissor version as my everyday carry knife, but in the end, I couldn't part with my trusty Victorinox compact. So in conclusion, it's easy to see why Victorinox continue to dominate this market. Their quality is superb. They have a vast selection and they are very affordable. And that is a hard combination to beat. And it also means if you do decide to pick a Vic, it's hard to go wrong. And with that in mind, if you want to see what my all time favorite Victorinox knives are, then you're going to want to click this video right here. And that's it for this one. Don't forget to subscribe if you love this stuff. And thanks as always for watching. And I hope to see you in the next one.